Oh, uh, don't you just hate that when you uh, order a part for something, but you're ordering it from overseas and you end up paying. Ah, uh, well, we don't even talk about paying. You order it from overseas, you know it's gonna take about three weeks for it to get here, and then all of a sudden you're in a local store and you find the same damn part that wasn't there that all of a sudden now is available and you can have it like yesterday, but you just ordered it from another store from overseas. What sort of happened to me? And of course, this with something to do with these cigarettes. Um, okay, it's raining. I'll right back I just noticed though there is totally a package in my guy we'll uh, crack into that package later but no I uh, I was chatting about that 18650 extension tube for the cool fire one yesterday in the video and sure as shit last night like I was gonna order it from from there but I'm sitting there last night and I'm gonna friggin canvade which is out of Toronto, one day ordering. They got the same fucking thing for the same price. Son of a bitch. Anywho, it happens to me all the time. Right now I wanna go upstairs and see what the frig's in this package. So let's go do that. Alrighty, here's what I got. Got one of these things, probably saying what the frig is it. Well, you put three 18650 batteries into it and it becomes a USB power source. Obviously, it doesn't come with the cables to charge it or to discharge it, or you know, for other reasons, it doesn't come with, ang ugh, freak sakes, it doesn't come with English uh, instructions. It's all in uh, Chinese or, or Japanese or, I don't know, overseas knees, who knows. But it's all friggin' impossible to read, but it's kinda cool, because you put three 18650s in there, and depending on the three, they should match and all have the same voltage when you load them in, otherwise you could have some problems. Then you got your out, so you can use that to charge your cell phone or it's great if you go camping and you just need to keep your phone charged all the weekend and stuff and uh, the light there will notify you of the percentage left of the cells and the device so that's fucking sweet I also got uh, my magnets for the nemesis both of them the nemesis I guess I don't know I ordered ten of them I don't know why oh yeah it was cheaper because I wanted four and 10 magnets was $3.99, 2 magnets was $1.99, so it would have cost me $4.99 to get freaking 3 freaking uh, magnets, or $3.99 or whatever, to get 4 magnets. I said, fuck it, I'm going to get 10, and that way there, if I ever come across somebody with a nemesis who wants to mag m magnetic switch their shit, well, I got backups. Frig yeah. I also got this here OBD scanner uh, Bluetooth jobby. You know, plug this into your car, and then you connect the other end Bluetooth to your phone or your computer or whatever you want to use iPad whatever and you can pull OBD readings right off the damn car while you're driving and stuff then you read air codes clear air codes all that shit so I'm gonna use this to see uh, what's really going on because the car is not throwing any service engine soon the last time it did was when the steering failed so sometimes air codes appear but the service engine soon light doesn't come on because it's not a critical condition it's something stupid like if your O2 sensor fails nowadays apparently the, the, the service engine soon light won't come on it won't bother because an O2 sensor isn't a critical component. Not as critical as say, oh, I don't know, a crank sensor bearing or, you know, a muffler bearing or like a flux capacitor tie fly-by-wire, you know? I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. My buddy told me that uh, this will work awesome, so I decided to pick one up. Fuck yeah. And last but not least, uh, I got a, another Russian 91%. Let uh, me just show you here. There you go, another Russian 91%. She is cold. You're probably thinking, Adam, why the hell did you buy that when you have a K-Fun light and a Russian 91% already? Reason why I bought that is not for me. This is actually Bloke's Russian 91% that I ordered for him off the internet. So when I go down there next time, I'm gonna bring this and show him how to build it and everything. He probably already knows. He probably watched the same video as I did. But it's freaking awesome. It's the best atomizer I've ever used. I love my two and uh, I definitely stand by them. They are mint. So I got this for bloke because it was like turbo cheap from, from Fast Tech and Unlike uh, a lot of the stores around here, well I shouldn't say that because can vape has them pretty cheap too. But some stores around here are charging like 90 to 95 dollars for these these tobacco clones and Silvesto clones and all that shit. So, but rig them. I just realized something. This is the Russian 91% that I got for bloke, right? Okay. And then there's my Russian 91%. Yeah, ignore the fact that the uh, tip is all chazzled with lip cheese. But if you look at them side by each, right away you'll notice, well number one I still got the 
stay in the steel tank on this one. But uh, the drip tips aren't right. Yeah, the one on Blokes, the drip tip's different. The reason why is, because apparently it's removable. That's why it's a clone of the Russian 91%, not the real deal. But hell yeah, she's built nice. Like, it looks like everything's there, so freak sakes. He'll, he'll be uh, he'll be chooching on that, no problem. Oh, that's something I wanted to check before I put it away, was to make sure, yes, it does have airflow control. Perfect, perfect. Because a lot of people like that, but there you go. Freak yeah. There we go. We got this thing all built. I just, uh, holy. Um, loaded three of these trust fires into it. They're 3,000 ma, so that gives me 9,000 milliamps of portable power. And when you press this button here, um, let me turn off the light. There we go. Now when you press this button here, it flashes green, letting you know she's full power, which she should be, because these batteries are fresh off the charger. So that gives me about, I would say, 9,000 ma. But I feel like, you know, because they're called Trust Fire batteries, they're 3,000 milliamps each. I'm going to say that these batteries are probably 2,500 each, 2,600 at the most. So we'll say 7,800 ma, just to, just to say milliamp hours yeah buddy so here's a good little test here is the magnets for the nemesis here's what the nemesis sounds like before okay it's a little crunchy but it works as you can tell freaky yeah okay let's get the magnets onto it I have no idea how to do this. Let's just dive in and figure it out. Ah, dick, I need the light. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so there's your little piece of shit spring in there, right? And, uh, they say that's the problem. Wait, why do I got another? What's that other piece in there? Whatever, it's all coming out. So when you squish this down, the isolator gets pushed back, and that's what makes contact with your battery is that pin. Well, as you can tell, that pin's threaded, so you just gotta unscrew that pin, and then the whole button, button comes apart. Then we get that spring out of there and drop some magnets into it. So let's do this. And there the Nemesis button be all torn down. Something I forgot to mention on my last video entry was you see that little pin yes that pin is required um, there's like a little keyway in the uh, bottom cap for that pin and there's also a keyway in the isolator ring for that and you got to make sure to keep that pin you need that otherwise this thing starts spinning and that thing starts spinning and then that thing gets loose this stuff is useless anyway let's put it back together with magnets that's not gonna be fun we'll show you once it's back together son of a bitch all you do is you put a magnet in here here. Oh, shit. I'm not even aiming the fucking camera at it. So you, you put a magnet in there and then another magnet in there so that the, they're polar sames. So if you're using two like north side ma magnets, now you want them to push away from each other, not attract each other. So you make sure that the polarity are the same aimed at each other and then they'll push away and they'll work just as well better than these springs. So I'm going to go ahead and put, build that back up now and I'll show you when it's done because it's a bitch to do and you need both hands. So yeah. Holy shit, we got one people. We got one. We, we got her in there. Look at this. No more spring. Just magnets and uh, she works pretty damn good nice and smooth and not loud uh, the spring itself was weird there was like this little stump of a spring not even sure what the frick was going on with that and then they had this big spring which you know is really weak so that'll make a huge world of difference also these uh, magnets are fragile like a son of a bitch I've broken the bottom one pretty bad luckily I only use three per nemesis and you're probably saying okay well there's three in there and there's five there therefore there's two missing where'd they go I'm sure they'll turn up <laughs> When you have the reverse polarity thing happening and you move your finger off of it for a millisecond, that fucking thing catapults across the room and you have no idea where the frig it went. So I'm going to have to go around and with a piece of metal or something to try and scoop it up because uh, the last thing I need is Oreo eating that and then get himself stuck to a post. And this thing here looks like it's one of those I'm going to have to be in my car to figure it out. So uh, what do you say we fucking take a tour out to the car? We'll just make sure we have some OBD software installed in this thing and go from there. Alrighty, well I just cranked off the rest of my coffee trying to figure, figure out how the hell you pair this thing because there's no physical buttons. I smell shit. <laughs> the he shit in the house? Freaking better not have. It was just out like like 15 minutes ago but uh, there's no physical button on it to actually tell it to pair like there is on like headphones and mice and all that jazz so let's go out to the car plug this some bitch into the OBD2 port and see if it just auto pairs maybe it auto pairs it does if it doesn't sense a connection, it probably just puts itself into pairing mode and holds it there until some device connects to it and goes with that, who knows. But, uh, yeah. Ignore the binging. I need to plug you guys into the OBD port. 
which is, I think, somewhere around here. There it is. So, let's do that. I didn't even show it. Okay, so the moment you plug that thing in, it's already in paired mode, and the code is 1234. You click OK, and there it is, OBD2 paired. So, we'll go ahead and close that. Now I'm using a program called Torque. Uh, oh shit, what's my GPS turned on? For sakes. Okay, so it's got everything in there. Um, you can check your engine fault codes and tap here to scan for faults. Not connected to ECU, connect to ECU first. Thought you were connected. Doesn't it say that it's... Okay, I gotta figure this thing out, so I'll be right back, guys. Works better when the car is running. But as you can see there, I'm sitting at a, about 1300 and some odd revs. And if I hit the throttle, you know, you get that. It tells you. So, and then you go in here to uh, fault codes. If you can press, press it right, then you can tap, and it should get me back some fault codes, maybe. Let me turn off my light again. But uh, yeah, it's gonna get some fault codes. Even though there is no SES on, service engine soon light, or whatever they call it. Um, we'll see what uh, comes back on the old son of a bitch here. And if there's anything about an O2 sensor, then fuck, we know what's going on. We, we got this one in the bag. We know where the fuel's going. We know why the car's gurgling. Oh, well shit, nothing wrong with the car. Well, that's kind of cool. It tells you your acceleration, your RPMs, your speed, your throttle percent. So if I give her a little bit more juice, that number goes up. You know, that's kind of neat. And this tells you the vacuum, I guess, and your coolant temperature. So I'm at 29 degrees Celsius. Ain't that something special? And then you can you can flip it over and you can do like 0 to 60, 0 to 100, quarter mile time, one eighth mile time, horsepower, set up your vehicle's profile. And this tells you all your misfire tests. Like these are all the emission tests that they do, the catalyst complete, evaporation systems complete. You know, it's kind of a cool little device for somebody who just wants to dick around with the there's nothing on that one um, but you can like you know you get different things like your revs and your, your whatever and you know just you can build your own like I think if you press and hold and you and you can like or maybe there you no know, maybe on the bottom here you click yeah and then you can add displays and stuff and you know completely make this like make make a whole desktop for yourself and like you know mount your phone over here like how pug one has that thingamajig that he bought you know and um that's kind of cool that's that's pretty awesome it's freaking awesome i love that so right on right on right on not exactly something i need to leave in there all the time but if I ever need to pull fault codes on a person's car, this will work with my phone. And yes, people, you can clear the codes if you have codes. Uh, I just didn't have codes because this car is working perfectly normal. It's just supposed to suck on fuel. Who knew? Anyway, it's back inside where it's not so wet. So with the magnet add-on, this button is like loosey-juicy. Freaking awesome. But uh, you can't sit it down on the table because if you do, it fires. So you can't put it on the table anymore. But it makes a big difference. Not as in makes a difference in performance, just makes a difference in how easy it is to press that button, which I like. Any hoozle people, I got the window open and it's windier than frig outside right now. But uh, that's all I got for today's video. I figured I would do the fast tech uh, unraveling and show you all the junk I got because it wasn't all the e-cigarette shit. The only e-cigarette shit I got was the magnets for the Nemesis and uh, blokes rushing 91%. Everything else was toys, like my new portable battery center. 10,000 mob raw power. Frig yeah, love that kind. Well, it's not really 10,000, it's not even 8,000. Well, it's close, anyway, whatever, who cares. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna pretty much call her quits for today's vlog, so hopefully you enjoyed that, what little it was. And uh, if you did, you know where that like button is, give it a clickety clack. And any questions, comments, concerns, you know where to leave them, down below they go, typical. And until next time, people, keep on vlogging.